When I started going through my midlife crisis, I had no idea or clue about it. You gotta watch this video to see how far midlife crisis can take you and how funny it gets. After spending my life being an overachiever, I held position as an optician. I gained my medical degree. I was a real estate broker, an investor, and I raised two children predominantly on my own. Midlife crisis, signs. So when I turned 42 and my children were getting ready to leave home, after being a single mother most of their life, I went into panic mode, not knowing that this was the onset of my midlife crisis, I started partying, putting my house up for sale, and partied like it was going out of style. I mean, I had all the classic signs of midlife crisis. I was between the age of 40 to 65. I was feeling trapped. I had this immense obsession to lose weight, to get back into shape, to look better, to feel better anything to make me feel young again. I even resorted to cosmetic surgery. I couldn't decide on what I wanted anymore. My life all of a sudden made no sense. I started questioning my mortality. What did I really want out of my life? Feeling as if there must be more to life than this. What have I done for myself? After giving so much to others, I was having severe mood swings and depression. Started looking back at all the big decisions in my life and questioning them. I was having trouble making even the smallest decisions. Started making new risky business decisions and otherwise. Constantly questioning my priority. Everything and everyone frustrated me including myself. I had increasing feeling of anxiety. I found satisfaction in nothing. I had increased compulsivity around food, drugs, alcohol, sex, and shopping. I dramatically increased going out, drinking, or clubbing. I changed my circle of friends. Then I started having problems sleeping, constantly not feeling like getting out of bed. Avoiding seeing people at one point, I even felt as if I truly hated people. I was literally a mess. However, I was clueless at the time. It felt all normal to me, as if I was just waking up. I am going to tell you how my midlife crisis turned worldwide adventure woke me up and changed my life. As I try to grow this channel, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. What you should do when going through midlife crisis. In growing up, I didn't have much, so I sacrificed. I was always gaining higher level education till I got to my medical degree. Working in real estate and investing, anything to get me richer and richer and richer. I was never rich enough or neither did I feel as if I had enough. When the market crashed three years ago and I lost one third of my wealth, this was really when my midlife crisis took a real strong hold on me. So I just bought a one-way ticket to Portugal with no plans or knowledge on what my next move was, not realizing that this was part of a midlife crisis. I had always heard of Portugal and how nice and friendly people were there. While there, I visited the entire southern part of Portugal, trying all their food and what they had to offer. I then flew over to Spain in Madrid. At this point, I started doing more introspection, more meditation. I think at this point, I went a little bit crazy, which started reflecting outwards. 
I cut off my hair and dyed it all red. It's amazing as you have turmoil inside, how it can reflect outward. Correction. You should acknowledge your feelings. Focus on self-care. Try not to make any quick or drastic change in your life. Keep track of changes. When my visa expired, I had to leave Europe. As you are only permitted to stay in the Schengen region for 90 days at a time. Very scared to go to Asia after the stereotype and negativity I heard over the years. But it was either Asia, Africa, or go back home. And I was definitely not going back home to face my demon, that boredom, that life that I grew to hate. I wanted more out of life. As I continued traveling in search of myself, who am I? What did I want out of life? I was so confused, not knowing that at the time, again, severe midlife crisis. So I booked a one-way flight to Thailand. Thailand was known for its Buddhist culture and meditation. So I thought it would be good for me to go meditate, to get in tune with my thoughts as I confront the arrows in my life and what I was going to do with the rest of it. Knowing nothing about the culture, language, or laws, I mean nothing. I just knew I was not returning home. After a week in Thailand, seeing how the people were so nice and caring to strangers, how safe I felt. There was so much to do in Thailand. Then, like all good things, my visa expired. I had to leave Thailand. Correction. Do not run from your emotions. Acknowledge them. Consider therapy or seek support from loved ones. Do not try to go through it alone. So I booked another one-way ticket to Singapore. Always one-way ticket. Always running. Always searching. Trying to find myself. I didn't know Singapore was so expensive. The people were not as welcoming as in Thailand. So my anger started resurfacing. Singapore has a lot of rules and regulations. Chewing gum and selling chewing gum is illegal. It is illegal to use or possess vaporizers and e-cigarettes. It is illegal to drink in public between 10.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. But it has maintained the status of being one of the richest countries in Asia. I then hopped over to Malaysia, which was close by. What a difference in the country. The people were not as friendly. So I sunk even more in my depression, even more in my hatred for people at the time. The food in Malaysia was very good. And being in my midlife crisis, being more subjective to impulsive of drugs, alcohol, food, expensive shopping. Man, did I overindulge on the food. Correction. Focus on what you can control. Add healthy habits. Reframe sudden impulses to overindulge in expensive purchases. Food, drugs, alcohol, and sex. As I continue to share my journey through my midlife crisis, comparing what I did as opposed to what I should have done, if I had recognized that I was going through a midlife crisis and implemented these changes, my midlife crisis would have not lasted seven years nor cost me as much. Continue watching to see new revelation that opened my eyes and helped me to recover. If you know someone going through midlife crisis, share this video. It just might help. Received really bad news. After leaving Malaysia, I wanted to run, to run as far as possible. So I went to the furthest part of the world, as far from America as I could. I booked another one-way ticket to Australia. Still searching. This in my thoughts was full circle. I had done all my medical work before leaving the US. 
because I had no idea or plans as to when I would return. While in Australia, my doctor called me from the US. He saw something on my medical report of concern. He needed me to return home for thorough testing, which I blatantly denied. He requested for me to do a PET scan because he told me frankly, I had signs of cancer. My world stopped. I told him where I was and he recommended that I found a place to do the test and send the results to him. At this point, I was still in denial. However, it, my mortality was plaguing me even more, the thought of having cancer. What I should have done. Identify and accept circumstances that are beyond your control. Reframe and reflect on your life. Be realistic. Maintain a sense of purpose. Take stock of your accomplishments. So I booked the next flight and headed over to Bali. Yes, Bali, the island of the gods. Everyone speaks well of Bali. Shaved my head off as if I was shaving away all my problems. Bali didn't have the resources to do the test you wanted, but I was in no rush to find out my results. The idea of my mortality and that I didn't accomplish all I wanted in my life kept plaguing me, even though I tried to enjoy myself in Bali. I started doing even more risky things, such as climbing the most dangerous volcanoes, not once, but twice, going down into sulfur lakes, searching for hikes no matter how dangerous they seem anything for me to say i have lived or yes i am living and again my visa expired i had to leave bali reality was closing in on me the only place in asia with financial feasibility that i could get the test done was in thailand so i had to face my demon I had to go back and get the PET scan done to clear me of having cancer. A better way to handle anxiety would have been to find better ways of tackling stress. Reduces risk of anxiety and depression. Don't let destructive feelings take over. Try to control your emotions and don't give in to them. Maintain a grateful attitude. So I booked a one-way flight to finally have the test done. Thailand medical system is indeed one of the best in Asia, not to mention its affordability. And their bedside manner is close to no other. I finally did the test. To my relief, I was cleared. This now turned my sight back to me. I'm going to live, thank God. Now I'm going to live. What am I going to do with my life? that I'm going to live. So I went back to running, to search for answers. I jumped on the next flight and flew over to Japan. What I should have done. Practice gratitude. Creating a mindset of gratitude can have profound changes. Spend time writing down the things you're grateful for. Tell someone you love how much you appreciate them. Include a random act of kindness in each day. In helping other, you will be helping yourself. Then the Trump questions start to resurfing. Now that I'm going to live, these questions I should have asked myself if I knew initially that I was in a midlife crisis. What am I scared of? What am I running from? And now looking back, going through my midlife crisis was actually a good thing. When you recognize it, it's a good thing. So many people hate their lives or their positions in their jobs and are scared to change. Take a moment to be brave, to search within. When you bottle up these emotions and live in denial, when it catches up with you, it makes your midlife crisis an even bigger crisis. So thinking on that, feeling confined in a big city like Tokyo, I jumped on the next flight to South Korea. Not wanting to stay in another big city, 
as I sort my thoughts out. I optioned to stay in this quiet hotel in Incheon. So beautiful. The entire room was remote controlled, even down to the heated floors. Amazing. This was a really beautiful town. The people were so nice. Feeling a bit better at this point, I started going back in the direction of home. Feeling better, feeling more connected. I jumped on the next plane and went over to the Philippines. Not wanting to miss any country in Asia, trying to cover all the territories. But that was a bit too fast, too quick, too soon. Philippines environment I found was not conducive to mentally calming down, processing my thoughts. So after about four days, I took the next flight and flew over to Cambodia. Cambodia. Cambodia is a very interesting country. It was invaded by the French many years ago. So it had a very strong French influence. The people as well were not as welcoming. However, there were Okay, the food was good, very good food. A touch of Asian with French. However, the crime rate in Cambodia seemed to be a little high. Always having to look over my back, I could just not get settled there. So I jumped on the next plane as I did and flew over to Taiwan. What I should have done. Go to positive calming areas if possible. Focus on yourself. Stay active. Spend time outdoors. Take some time to reflect on past interests and neglected hobbies. Embrace your creative side. Do something to feed your creativity. It's amazing how your surrounding can truly affect your mental state. Being in Philippines and Cambodia, areas that I was in really dialed me back quite a bit. So I jumped on a plane and went over to Taiwan. I had always heard of great things about Taiwan. Taiwan was another beautiful place. The people were very friendly. Most of them didn't speak English. So it gave me even more time to reflect, to resolve. Instead of looking at my life negatively, I started looking at different parts of my life. Which parts do I really want to change? I started realizing that it was the idea of my mortality that I feared. I had a pretty successful life. I did my duty to my children who are now in college. So what's next for me? You start seeing things a little more clearer at this point. And with that clarity comes resolution and solid decisions. Recovery at last. Feeling a bit better, I now jumped on the plane. Another one-way ticket to Vietnam. Vietnam was a welcome sanctuary for me. Amidst my fear that they wouldn't like me because I'm American, because of the history of the war, man, did they love me. I stayed for most of my time in Da Nang, a coastal town that I believe is one of the best places on earth. As faith would have it, I arrived in the rainy season. And in this season, it rains nonstop for weeks at a time. This was exactly what I needed. I mean, I got to see so much. And with this rain and being forced to stay in, it gave me the push I needed for full introspection and resolution. Now looking back, how crazy I went. It took me seven years to get out of my midlife crisis because I denied myself of things I really wanted all my life. When a major life-changing event happened, like my kids leaving home, and the threat of having cancer, my mortality slapped me right in the face. As I came to realize I had lived half my life and I might not have much further to go. What I should have done if I realized it at the time 
was reevaluate what needed to stay in my life and what needed to go. My midlife crisis was a missed opportunity to make positive changes in my life. It could have been just from painting a room in the house or getting in shape or dumping some unhealthy friendships that I've always wanted to get rid of or even making that career change since I was so unhappy on my job. I should have taken things much slower. Instead of being overcome by anxiety and going into crazy land. I was there for four months, so I had the time. I started seeing that it was indeed a blessing to have this midlife crisis once you recognize it. And it was even more of a blessing that I had the rest of my life. I vowed at this point that the rest of my life belongs to me. I am taking back my life. I am channeling the course for a new, improved journey. If you are in my situation, don't make quick decisions or sudden moves like I did. But start implementing this change gradually. Start loving you a bit more each day. Start praising yourself for all you have accomplished. Start working on what you want to accomplish in the second part of your journey. What footsteps do you want to leave behind? Be bold. Be free, be loved, embrace the midlife crisis and acknowledge it for what it is as you take control of your life and direct it in the path that you want to go. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button as we're trying to make it to 2,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for being a part of my journey.